Oi, Johnny, who's that? Is it English Prism? No. Scottish Prism? No. Welsh Prism? No. It's Irish Prism. No luminaries allowed. So I want to start off apologizing for the intro to all the people that love Prism. Um, but yeah, you can't blame me for doing it. It's just too much fun. And in this video, I want to talk about Prism and the Prism deck that I feel has the most potential to be strong at the start, at least at the start, because I think it's a hero that needs some discovering. And I feel like the main strategy of going for the angels or the figments, transforming them into angels, costs a lot of resources, especially to give them go again. So I do not feel that that's a very viable option in a world where you have very aggressive decks like Lexi. I do feel like there's a room for Iris of Reality in Prism, which is why I want to talk about the Iris of Reality build that some of you might have already seen in Prism. I took it into a more tempo value based deck. Feel free to experiment with it. I'll start off with a small introduction into Prism. And then we will go into the equipment. Then we go to the main board, the sideboard, and some cards to consider. And I'll probably end on some closing thoughts. Um, be sure if you like these kinds of deck decks to subscribe to the channel. Uh, maybe check out the Vincent deck deck that I did. Um, and let me know if there's anything you want to see. Um, oh, and let me know. What your favorite flesh and blood card is mine it's channel lake frigid and yeah let's jump into the deck tech welcome back to another deck tech this time around i will be talking out prism awakener of soul and uh focusing around the iris of reality version of prism let's start off with the hero card prism awakener of soul so whenever a card with Herald in its name is put into Prism Soul during an action phase, you may search your deck for a figment, put it into the arena, then shuffle your deck. And once per turn instant, a pay to banish a card from Prism Soul, awaken target figments you control. So a few things to note. First off, it's an instant that you can use once per turn, also meaning that you can do it in your opponent's turn. And the word figment so what are figments figments are a new kind of card introduced in dusk till dawn which also brought us the new prism and it's a light illusionist instant with the denominator figment and when they enter the arena they have a small effect so this one creates a ponder token this one creates a spectral shield this one deals one arcane damage and with the ability from prism we can flip them which reveals a very cool angel and a ally, an angel ally that can attack once per turn for two resources with no go again. We do have to note without the go again and uh, a special effect. So when Soraya, this angel attacks, you banish a card from your hero's soul. And if you do draw two cards, it has ward four, it has four attack and four uh, life. So, uh, What's very cool, at least uh, what I think is very cool about the design of Prism in general is the yellow team, etc. It's all about symmetry and symmetry is considered to be holy. Another thing to note about the figments is that they cost four to play and they don't have any defense values. Going back to Prism, so when we attack with a Herald, for example, a Herald of Protection, which is a Herald, has a Herald in its name. We get to look into our deck, find the figment we want, put it in the arena. So circumventing the forecast to play the figment and be able to, for two resources, uh, awaken it, turning it into an angel. Personally, I do feel like, just, with, just as with Vincent, it can be a very... Um, uh, tricky card to decipher because at first hand um, the, the first part of the card reads 
uh, that you can basically select the figments you want but the figments having no block value means that if you put a lot of figments into your deck you will be less uh, you will be able to block less meaning you will be more susceptible to aggro for example and uh, finding it and putting it into the field is nice but drawing a figment isn't as nice and the second one which uh, feels like it's weak well it's weak it's it's just a way to awaken the figments has more power to it than you might than it might seem because you can also use it to awaken a figment in your opponent's turn creating either an angel in their end step which can be nice which this deck doesn't resolve around or you're able to at instant speed basically get a block four out of the figment which is why I am running a few figments. Um, if you can pair it with something else that you pay your resource into, you can turn a blue into a block four, five, or maybe even eight, which is really nice. Let's jump into the second and most important part of this deck besides Prism, the hero. It's Iris of Reality. Iris of Reality is a weapon that's been around since Monarch. It has seen play in a previous iteration of Prism where it also generally worked the same way. And with some new tools, this deck can probably be similar or might even be a little bit better than the old Iris of Reality Prism, which we will have to see because it's, it still hasn't been released. Um, it reads as follows. All your auras are weapons, basically, with four attack, and you can attack with them once per turn, and they have go again. And go again is very relevant for this deck, because all the heralds don't have go again you used to be able to get go again off luminaris the old luminaris has gotten the living legend status same as the old prism so there's not much go again going around in this deck so being able to pitch a blue into a four attack with go again can be really nice um and it's the name bearer for this deck so the iris of reality prism deck let's jump into the equipments I just have four and one, one in the sideboard. So we have skull cap because we started a lower life total. It will block two and still have a one block. So you can pretty much cover up two break points. Um, and you, you can have the arcane barrier three, which isn't that relevant, but maybe in some situations you can use it. It's generally just there for the block three. Tunic, tunic, it's a staple. There's probably other chest pieces you could run uh, but i really like tunic in this deck because of a lot of reasons i'll jump in a few of them because uh, one tunic resource allows you to play a miraging metamorph so you can block with three cards from hand or four cards from hand have this in the arsenal and just go tunic into miraging metamorph you can use the tunic resource for the phantasma footsteps which we'll dive into later you can use a tunic and a yellow for a wounded bull can use a tunic resource for a brothers in arms um, if you're running oasis respite you can use the tunic for an oasis respite so there are a lot of different ways you can use a tunic resource in this deck which is why i am running tunic next up is phantasma footsteps it has three separate lines of text the first one being that if an illusionist attack action you control is destroyed generally popped uh, you may pay one resource and if you do gain one action point uh, some interesting tech you can do is attack with a herald and if they pop it you can still pay for phantasmal footsteps and essentially get go again um, so it is a way to bait out the go again uh, generally you could do this with a herald of erudition which has dominate or for example a herald of tenacity let's say we play herald of tenacity and they pop the herald of the nasty because they don't want to take the three damage we can pay one uh for the phantasma footsteps and gain an action point giving us go again without actually having a source of go again which is nice second one uh, is when you defend with it you can pay one resource and if you do it gets one block value until the end of turn um you can use this Kind of in a similar way as you would use the shield from old him, where you, uh, especially against decks that break the chain, uh, you can 
use it multiple times. So let's say you play against a uh, Plexi, the prime example, and she uses a Codex, or she has a Codex. So in the first chain, you block with the Phantasmal Footsteps and the card blocking four, preventing a breakpoint. And then she uses a uh, Codex of Frailty. Uh, because it is a non-attack action, it breaks the chain, allowing you to block with the Phantasmal Footsteps again. So if you have a suspicion that they have a Codex, or you know you're up against a deck that breaks the chain often, for example, a Dash does this a lot to uh, load in a pistol, for example, you want to use the Phantasmal Footsteps as early as possible because it turns into a two, maybe three or, e or even a four block of one resource, which is really, really strong. But do note the last line, if it blocks an attack with six or more attack, uh, it gets destroyed. So you do have to be careful of cards that give uh, attacks extra damage. For example, the Rain Razors on a four or a five attack arrow can be very dangerous to block out with the Phantasma footsteps because you could lose them. And the last one, a uh, card from Dynasty, Wave of Reality. Uh, it's played in Dromai as a counter to Plexi and in this deck it has even more value because of the first well because of the spectral shield but also because it blocks off two breakpoints so the ward one meaning it will prevent one damage so if they come in with a four you can just put three block in front of it and prevent the fourth damage and it also generating a spectral shield means that you can block off another breakpoint with the spectral shield one awesome thing to note a spectral shield is an aura so you can also use this on the last chain of the attack uh, so the the word gets popped and the wave of reality gets destroyed you get the spectral shield which you can then attack with using iris of reality so if you keep a blue you can attack with the spectral shield it's a way to cheat out one aura more uh at the end of a turn basically so that's the equipment suite oh and for the sideboard uh notably we have the crown of reflection it is a way to uh cycle an aura so you can switch up one aura uh for another war aura uh they do need to have less or the same cost uh but it's generally there for the arcane barrier one for uh rune chance for example i haven't played this deck against wizards but wizards don't really have a way of interacting with auras and they generally have a very yeah, clean rate of attack so uh, icelander will probably do four or five arcane and seven arcane at best in their turn meaning that the, their clock is pretty slow and you can just build off the auras get a get some spectral shields for example and just start beating them down before the arcane barrier really starts to matter or the arcane damage really stacks up you could technically also run arcanite skull cap against icelander to have the arcane barrier three because you will start off lower than the icelander even and in the game states where it matters um well in the game states where it matters you'll probably have more life than the icelander so the arcane barrier wouldn't be active um so probably ground of reflection is the best choice there's probably space to also uh run another no rune equipment maybe the gloves you'd have to take out the sideboard card and against the wizards we also have three oasis respite which will be boarded in for for example sink below against the kano for example and then you can just keep the Oasis Respite in the arsenal, wait for their big combo turn and just Oasis Respite the Aether Wildfire, which just shuts down their entire combo turn. Anyways, let's jump into the main deck. So our strategy for this deck is a low and slow value control style deck. Not necessarily fatigue, but you're building an engine of auras, which you will be using as weapons. Uh, pitching blues to attack and generally try and keep your life total at a healthy range so there's a lot of three blocks there's some four blocks we have uh, some a lot of blues I think about 28 blues 
to fuel the iris um, and we have some staples that you run in most of these kinds of decks starting with the first two i personally love these two cards in most decks uh, especially in the value mid-range kind type of decks command and conquer it's a must block or lose a card card meaning that if they have an arsenal and you attack with this they will either have to block with two cards uh, gaining you two cards of course uh, two cards less to block out it's a tempo swing or uh, they take any sort of damage and lose the card in the arsenal generally you want to keep a card in the arsenal that you need for the next turn to set up a big turn even so a, as a ninja you might, might want to arsenal a red surging strike or a descending gust wave or a bonds of ancestry and losing that can really hurt your turn so command and conquer in these kind of decks where you block with two maybe even three cards and come back with one attack is just really really nice another card that's a very very efficient and also very flexible card is uh, enlightened strike all three modes are relevant going for a you know, basically a one card seven because you you do have to put one on bottom uh, but it's a one card seven um, or the go again to start off a chain um, if you have two reds maybe and you have a blue or you, you have a card that you don't want to arsenal you can put one on the bottom give it go again and then attack with an aura afterwards or you can cycle a card so if you have a card you don't want to arsenal and you have an e-strike you can play the e-strike cycle a card meaning that you put one on the bottom and you draw a card netting you a card maybe a better card to arsenal than the card you had in hand so there's just a lot of ways to play e-strike and it also blocks for three same as command and conquer over to the first and the probably the strongest herald it's herald of protection herald of protection uh, is considered a two card nine it's uh two for seven and when it hits you get to put it in soul which is the eighth point of value and creating a spectral shield is the ninth point of value so it's arguably the strongest herald that's why you run nine uh, they also have six attack even in yellow and it's a break point of seven at red so it's a great attack to to come back with to trade on life total and of course the blue which on its own is a good card because it's a two for five uh, with the spectral shield and the uh, soul it's a two for seven and uh, still blocking three pitching for blue it's just all around a very nice card I do also run Herald of Tenacity in red, which you can technically switch up for a blue, but it's a way to close out the game, close it, get some damage in, uh, force a card into soul. Um, it's just, an, in my opinion, a pretty nice card to have. It still blocks for three, so you can just use it as a block card. Um, if you're looking to run more blues, I would probably cut this Herald of Tenacity. Uh, Roger Metamorph, very strong, one card seven. Uh, opportunic resource, it's just uh, fantastic. And if they pop it, you get to copy an aura. And this basically being an aura deck means you get one of something you really want more. So you can get uh, another shimmers or something. And we'll get to the auras later. Sink below, of course, uh, you do have some cards that don't block. So being able to cycle it no block into a block card can be nice cycling a red into a blue can be nice it's just all around the arguably the best defense reaction at least in this deck and i am running a wounded bull uh, a lot of people don't run wounded bull on this kind of list i want to try it out it's for one it's a popper in the mirror or against dromai and if you look at it um, you are starting off on a lower life total and you will be pitching blues into attacks so if you're pitching blue into iris or into an aura attack you're pitching a blue for four and if you're on a lower life total and you're pitching a blue into wounded bull you're basically uh, have the same value as pitching into two auras two aura attacks uh, arguably the aura does have go again this one doesn't but Keeping uh, just two cards, a blue and a wounded ball can be really nice. Uh, so I, I'm going to try it out. 
Uh, if you don't like it, you can put in a blue, maybe some defense reactions. Um, but I do think this is a bit more of a tempo list. So I'm talking about cards I, I'm trying out. Celestial Resolve. This might not be a main board card because it doesn't block. And you generally only want to use it to cover up seven. And seven is very relevant against Rangers, for example. An infecting shot will come for seven of a rain razors a remorseless a maybe even a frailty or a uh sedation shot or any other uh, a heat seeker all will come for seven if they have a rain razor so having this as a way to block off seven with two cards instead of three can be really nice and prevent some more damage it does however have a no block and it can brick your hand a little bit uh it also being yellow means you cannot convert it into an aura attack but you can convert it into a herald attack so i am running it if you don't like it you can either put in maybe fate for scenes which also block for four um or uh but they have one pitch instead of two um or maybe put in some more blue heralds um i have three figments Generally, I don't want to use the figments for the flip um, because I honestly don't see a world where flipping an angel has a lot of value, um, but I'll get to that. Um, I want to use them for the enter the arena effect, which is in this case a ponder. Nice spectral shield. Nice one arcane, which can be very nice, especially if they don't run arcane barrier against you. It can just win you the game. I feel like they are strong but they're very expensive so just playing it out which you sh should probably never do except for maybe turn one it's just a bad call because you're paying four for a ponder or you're paying four for a spectral shield and if you want to do the entire thing so play this transform it which costs two and attack will cost you eight resources so basically your entire hand just to play out a four attack which just isn't really nice and adding on to it that they can either be targeted because they have life with an attack so losing you the angel or they just attack you and trigger the ward effect even with just one damage means that you can if you're doing the whole thing paying all the eight resources if you can um to attack for four if they just have one dam leak one damage that entire turn will basically be undone so that's why i don't think pigments are that strong in a situation where you are trying to force the angels to attack um because they don't have go again and they're very much used as a uh, as the figments and to which i think can be very interesting uh flip them on instant speed so let's say we have a blue in hand and they're coming in for a four attack um or maybe even a five attack let's say an infecting shot and we have just a three block from the blue and we have one figment what we can do is we pitch one into the phantasma footsteps uh and the remaining two into the figment which uh the word four will trigger and the phantasma footsteps will block the remaining one damage off meaning that you blocked five with one blue card and you still probably have three cards left in your hand which is in my opinion the one of the best use cases at least for the figments in this deck um in a luminaris celestial fury deck it still gets very expensive because you want yellow cards you want blue cards you want red cards and the figments don't block so I'm currently not seeing a list where figments can win you the game unless you were already winning the game. So in my opinion, they're much the flipped versions. These ones are very much a win more card, uh, but the figments themselves being able to get them, just get a small effect from hitting a herald is nice. I'm running a Soraya. Um, some people run it, some people don't. I feel like it's a block three so you can always block with it and the opportunity cost is just two resources and a spectral shield to get uh an angel that heals you basically for five if they attack 
which can be really nice especially in this kind of deck where you're playing a more control style slow based value based game plan uh getting to heal five at least once can be really nice and also has the word for so you probably will only be doing it once if you can get it off twice you pretty much have won uh, i feel i have a set of cards that work really well with pitching in your opponent's turn so let's say we block with the phantasmal footsteps so we have to pay one we still have two, two floating resources and when you have a deck that generally wants to pay in your opponent's turn you want cards that gain value off the extra resources you paid with you can of course pay with a bread to fuel the phantasmal footsteps but if you can pay a let's say a blue uh for the phantasma footsteps and pair it with the brothers in arms you get to block five with a blue and the brothers in arms and the footsteps or you can go uh soul shield and if they for example do a surging strike you can soul shield uh the surging strike and if they come afterwards with a Kodachi, you can still use the one resource with the Phantasma footsteps. So these cards, the Soul Shield and the Brothers in Arms, pair really nicely with the Phantasma footsteps, which you will be using to get block off breakpoints uh, and essentially allowing you to block off two or even three breakpoints with just one blue pitch. Uh, also, you can go uh, a, a Figment, Transform a Figment and Brothers in Arms for eight for example uh, or go for a tunic resource figment soul shield for 10 so there's a lot of ways to block off really big big amounts of damage off a blue uh, thanks to soul shield and brothers in arms brothers in arms also allowing you to pitch into an aura attack meaning that it's generally never a dead card then we have all the auras haze bending passing mirage fierce reality shimmers um Haze bending and shimmers being maybe the strongest. I'm not entirely sure. I feel like they're very strong. Haze bending generally meaning that if they attack an aura, you get a spectral shield. So basically you get a aura for an aura and the spectral shield still prevents one damage, which is really nice. And shimmers uh, building your attacks up to more damage each time you use an aura attack is a way to snowball the game out of control because if they're not going to clear the shimmers it will go up to five six seven eight uh and it starts to get really really out of hand let's talk about sideboard and some cards to consider so first off in my sideboard i have fate for scenes oasis respites arc light sentinel uh warmongers Diplom diplomacy and a crown of reflection and there's still some slots for some auras, but I'll talk about the auras later. First off, Fate for Scene for a slower matchup where you want to be defending more. Can be really nice to put it in for, let's say, a, uh, a Wounded Bull. If you want to go less for tempo, more for control style gameplay. Oasis Respite also. Uh, really nice to pair up with the brothers in arms with your phantasma footsteps especially nice to bring in against wizards being able to block off their big arcane attacks like the aether wildfire or the red or the red aether ice vein and the last card of the defensive suite well the second to last card uh arclight sentinel it's one of the reasons i don't like playing against prism because it can just take a turn um if you play it in response to them to for example when i i, I played lexi when Pri old prism was still around and i would play a three of a kind and they would arc light sentinel basically just killing my turn which is why arc light sentinel is very strong uh, you can do it when a uh, prior plays a channel mount heroic you can do it on a moderate turn you can do it when bravo pitches into a seismic surge there are so many ways you can use arc light sentinel to basically steal a turn it does cost six and with a 
curve in this deck of a lot of blues it can be more easily played from a two cards instead of three cards it's a really nice arsenal card but i do think you don't play it in every single matchup but in certain matchups where you're pretty sure that you can block out their big turn so let's say against bravo i probably wouldn't play it because if they just don't make a seismic search you can you don't have a way to play out the arc light sentinel let's say for example and i think the big targets are the, the rangers especially lexi uh, maybe the ninjas, definitely the uh, the rune blades. I think fist fry might be pretty strong this upcoming season with Lexi having less of uh, arcane barrier. So fist fries might see more play because they also naturally counter Tromai. So Arclight Sentinel can be really strong into them because if they go Morphin Skies or Mordred Tide, you just Arclight Sentinel and you shut their turn down. And the last defensive card I'm running is Warmonger's Diplomacy. Um, it's very much a new card. It's a tech card. So it's generally strong against Rangers. Because they cannot use a 3 of a kind or Rain Razors, etc. Um, it can be strong against Rune Blades. Because they want to go non-attack into attack. So there's some matchups where it can be really nice. It's also a, a cost zero blocks three pitches a four three so it doesn't hurt to run it in those matchups specifically and of course the ground of reflection for the arcane barrier one it is very tight to squeeze in more arcane barrier you could probably get more arcane barrier if you really want to um it does make the wizard matchups a bit scarier running only arcane barrier one uh, you will definitely also board in the Oasis Respite, uh, making sure to block the play either Wildfire or the Red Aether Ice Vein. Um, but the matchups against Wizards might not be that tough because they have no way, well, except for Bullander, they generally don't have a way to interact with the Aura, so you're just building a very strong engine quite quickly some cards to consider for this deck you still have two heralds that i did not include the herald of rebirth it's just a way to put deck cards from the from your graveyard on top of your deck generally don't think you want to go that far into a fatigue matchup and if you go that far into a fatigue matchup you generally have auras which you're beating down with so I don't see the use for it. Maybe if you're st looking for a Herald that's a blue, you can add it in. Uh, another one that I do not play that is probably a good one to play is the Herald of Triumph. Because it's not poppable. Uh, maybe it's worth to run the reds over the red Herald of Tenacity. Uh, because this one's a six. The Herald of Triumph will be a 7. It will not be poppable because most attacks that pop are 6. And this gives them minus 1. So it's a 7 that's not poppable. And the Herald of Triumph is a dominate which can be popped. Um, pops of course referring to triggering of the Phantasm. And yeah so maybe I haven't been able to play test this deck a lot. Uh, maybe the Heralds of Triumph are better. You should check them out for yourself. Talking about great Heralds, there's one I didn't talk about. It's Herald of Erudition. It's a fantastic card. But sadly, you cannot reliably use the two cards you draw off the Herald. So if you're attacking with the Herald, uh, there's no reasonable way to get go again. Unless you're running the new Luminaris, which we are not. And even if you are running the new Luminaris, it will be a very expensive way to draw two cards. Because you have to pitch four to give the Herald go again. Um, especially in this deck, you won't be leveraging the two cards that you draw off the Herald in most situations. So that's why you don't run it. Although it's a really, really cool card and very much a staple in my opinion. And we also have the Figment of Triumph, which people do use they use it in combination with for example the halo of illumination 
which means you will be trading your Arcanite skull cap for one use of the halo generating this in for example the opponent's turn you can do it in response to let's say a lexi firing off a bolton shot which can steal a turn but in my opinion i feel like arcanite skullcap having the two block and then the one block is very much relevant and having being able to fetch one pigment on instant speed to give minus one um if you're talking about value it needs to be in a turn where your opponent will do three attacks to give minus one to get the same rate as you get with arcanite skull cap i do see the funny shenanigans you can also flip the figment get ward four but in my first build i don't really see the use case for figment of triumph over the other figments rerun and i do think running a lot of more figments making your deck less blockable also doesn't help in the kind of strategy we're running talking about no blockable cards we have four instant speed auras we have genesis merciless merciful retribution parable of humility and o to wrath i find it very hard to choose which ones you want and even to include them into the deck i do think they can be valuable because with the genesis or with the merciless retribution and any one of these actually you can do two auras because they're instants you can do it in their turn which does generate a lot of value because if you play two auras they can only clear one if they don't have a way to generate an action point meaning that it will be a lot easier to snowball the game but it also means that you're more success susceptible to uh damage and you're starting only at 32 so i am still thinking about which ones to include probably genesis if you're going to play a slow matchup can be really really strong and you can also play these off a blue with the tunic resource um and yeah, maybe an O to Wrath, because it gives your illusionist attacks go again, making you snowball the game harder with the Herald into an aura, which you otherwise cannot do, or maybe even the Merciful Retribution, pinging 4-1 every time. They destroy a Spectral Shield, so pairing up the Genesis with the Merciful Retribution can be a very strong way to incrementally win a game over time, because you generating one Spectral Shield every time, they attacking you, you just destroying the spectral shield taking the one damage doesn't account for much but if you do it over three four five turn cycles it really adds up also getting the cards into soul getting uh to select the cards you want to have in your hands to fix some hands it can be really strong but i do also think it's quite tricky to run all of them or most of them so if i would make a sideboard um we have these nine i think you just always run these nine i would probably add two one more genesis so i have two genesis two merciful retributions to be able to go into more of a aura plan to have the two auras each turn uh two auras in the turn and set up the one aura be able to play the game like that just some closing thoughts about the deck i think it will be a very annoying deck to play especially if you're if the pilot knows what he's doing i do not see it becoming like a meta breaker like prism used to be she used to dominate the meta because she had the luminara so the herald said go again you could do the aura plan all all that stuff basically for free which this prism cannot do i think it will be a strong deck i think it will have polarizing matchups but personally i think at least for uh, a build like this iris of reality prism if you don't get on online very quickly you will just lose out against the aggro decks you will be having a hard time against the bravos and the zuris and might even be another good pick into tromai because you have a hard time clearing all the dragons 
which old prism with the spectral shields was it it was a lot easier to clear dragons because you were just trading shields for ash wings and now you have a hard time creating spectral shields so it's a lot harder to be able to attack with the spectral shields um so i am not seeing it as a meta breaker i don't think it will be too strong i think it will be a very strong deck in capable hands i think it will be very annoying to play against i do not think this deck will be broken not at the start at least uh, if you like it please let me know if you have any questions throw them into the comments if you want to see any particular hero in the deck deck or any particular type of deck let me know i'll try to dive into them and make a comprehensive deck deck video for that one and hope to see you around next time uh um we when we uh, very important uh uh um uh um 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 you um and